Hello, Chibian family. Welcome back to Voice of Healing, where we have been studying together the seven Hebrew words of praise. I am your beloved brother, Jerry Malanda, the leader of Hope Fan Church. And today, I want to continue our study on the praise called Barak. Before we begin, I want to remind you of the points that we covered in the previous episode. The first point was the meaning of Barak. The second point, God is not a tyrant. The third point was kneeling is not a form of penance. And the final point was pledge of allegiance to Christ. So let's get into the second part of this teaching. Point five, recount all your blessings. When we barack God in prayer, we recount all our blessings and enumerate them one by one. David was very good at doing that. In the book of Psalms, chapter 103, verse 1 to verse 5, David says, Bless the Lord. The word he's using is Barak the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. And bless, again, Barak the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Then uh, he starts enumerating all the blessings uh, of the Lord in his life. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destructions, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that uh, your youth is renewed like the egos. When we pray, we bless God by putting him in remembrance of his wondrous work in our life and all the wondrous miracles that he has done in the Bible. Now, if we want to defeat the giants in our life, like Goliath in the life of David, we need to master the art of always putting ourselves in remembrance of the previous victories that God gave us over our challenges. David, for instance, when he faced Goliath in 1 Samuel chapter 17, from verse 34 to verse 37, David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock of my father, I went out after it and I struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, what I did is I caught it and by the beard, if it was the bear, and I struck it and I killed that bear. Your servant had killed both the lion and the bear. So he reminded himself of the victories over the lion and the bear. So this uncircumcised Philistine called Goliath, God also will deliver me that, that giants into my hands in the name of Jesus. That's what David said. And in verse 37, he says, Moreover, David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of these Philistines. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you in Jesus' name. You need to master that art of putting God in remembrance of all that he has done in your life. If he healed you in the past, have a book where you write down all the testimonies that you have received from Jesus, all the miracles that he has done. And when you are facing a new challenge, a new sickness, a new disease, when you come in the place of prayer, start by thanking God. God, I thank you because in 2020, you healed me of COVID-19. I thank you again because in 2018, you healed me of diabetes. I thank you because in 1985, you healed me of cancer. Mention them one by one. That is how we barack God in Jesus' name. Point number six, stop blessing or barracking Satan. 
Unwittingly, some Christians barack Satan by constantly enumerating in the prayers and in all their conversations what Satan and his demons have been doing. They don't know that actually by always remembering all the sicknesses, the diseases, talking about those failures, people that prayed and were not healed, people that believed God for a miracle and did not receive those miracles, they actually are barracking Satan. They forget all the miracles, all the benefits that God did in the life. But David did not forget all the benefits that God brought in his life. The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah, for instance, chapter 36, verse 18, King Hezekiah was facing the army of the Assyrians. And Satan was now whispering in the ears of everybody, don't believe Hezekiah. And today, don't believe Jerry because he's misleading you. And uh, the king of Assyria said, the Lord will, Hezekiah is saying to you that the Lord will rescue you. The Lord is going to heal you. The Lord is going to deliver you. And the king of Assyria said, have the gods of any other nations ever saved the people from the hands of the king of Assyria? Behind the king of Assyria was Satan himself in the book of Isaiah chapter 14. So truly, whenever you hear words that you are not going to be healed, you are going to die. So and so died of cancer, so and so died of, uh, of uh, whatever disease, that is Satan speaking to you. And he's going to enumerate everybody who died of that same disease. He's barracking his own work. You need to take a testimony and choose uh, to remember, to have a recollection of uh, other testimonies of people who were healed. That's how we overcome in the name of Jesus. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 tells us that we the saints, we overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb who qualified us to be partakers of the promises of God and by the word of our testimonies. Find two or three testimonies like David and remind yourself of what God did in the past. Like David reminded himself of uh, the lion that he killed, the bear that he killed, and he said that these Philistines, God also is going to deliver him into my hands. The Bible tells us in Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20, Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. And believe also is a prophet, and you shall prosper, or you shall be victorious in this battle. And so shall it be in your case, in Jesus' name. Put yourself in remembrance of all those testimonies that God did in your life in, your, in the past. Point number seven. Your blessing must go up before God's blessing comes down. God does not like it when his children are murmuring, complaining, and arguing his commandments. But what he longs to see in his children is we blessing him, barracking him, enumerating all the good things that he has done in our life. And in the Bible, Philippians chapter 2 verse 14, Paul says to us, do all things without murmuring, complaining, or arguments. We have the tendency of whining in the place of prayer or uh, Actually, in all of our conversations, whenever we are facing a challenge, we keep on whining, complaining, and murmuring. We need to learn to bless the Lord, to barack the Lord, to remember all the good things that he has done. We should never forget all the benefits that we have been enjoying in our life because of all the miracles that Jesus did for us. In the wilderness, for instance, God gave the children of Israel bread from heaven, manna from heaven. And instead of being thankful for what God has done for them, they complained about that bread. They murmured uh, to uh, God because of that bread. They complained against Moses and they were against God. And uh, they called that bread what? What is that? And that's why it is called manna. Manna literally means what? They despised the bread from heaven. And God also, as a punishment, gave them that same diet for 40 years. They ate manna 
for 40 good years. If you despise what God is giving unto you, you are murmuring and complaining. God will not perform another miracle. You need to be like David to enumerate all the victories that God has given unto you. And you are going to see God is going to do another great miracle, even defeating Goliath in your life in Jesus' precious name. This is the secret of Barak. Now, let me take, for instance, an example. Point number eight, we want to take an example of how to practically Barak. Let us say, for instance, a person has been barren and you have been believing God for the fruit of the womb. You must start by putting God in remembrance of his word. To find in this Bible similar testimonies of believers who actually were facing a problem of barrenness and God delivered them. You will go on your knees in Barak. You kneel down in the place of prayer and you say to God your father, Father, I thank you. Because my mother Sarah and my father Abraham, they also were barren. But my Bible tells me in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 11 that Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. And she bore a child when she was past the age of childbearing because she judged God faithful who had promised. And also I remember my mother Rebecca and my father Isaac. They also were barren for 20 good years. But my Bible tells me in Genesis chapter 25 verse 21 that now Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife Rebecca because she was barren and the Lord granted his plea and Rebecca, his wife, conceived twins Esau and Isaac. And also right now, I feel like Mother Rachel. Mother Rachel said to Jacob in Genesis chapter 30 verse 1, when she saw that her sister Leah bore children to Jacob and she was bearing no child to Jacob, Rachel envied Leah and she said to Jacob, give me a, a child. Give me children or else I die. Right now, my father, I feel like Rachel. Give me a child or I die. So, Father God, you have heard my cry. The same way you heard the cry of Rachel and you gave her Joseph and Benjamin in the name of Jesus, you are going to do the same thing for me because my Bible tells me in the book of Exodus chapter 23, verse 25 to verse 26, that if I serve the Lord our God, the God of my fathers, you in return, you are going to bless my bread. You are going to bless my water and you are going to take away sickness from the midst of me and of my siblings, and uh, you say that no one among us shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in our land, and the number of our days, we are going to fulfill them. And right now, I believe that what you did for Sarah, you did for Rebecca, you did for Rachel, you are going to do it for me as well, in the mighty name of Jesus. Because my Redeemer lives, and I know the same way stood for Rebecca, for Rachel, and for Sarah, my fathers and my mothers in the faith, and give them children. I'm going to bear children as well in the mighty name of Jesus. And this is how we barack. And you can take any other example from the Bible and barack the Lord, put him in remembrance of all that he has done concerning that subject. When I do healing crusade, I don't truly pray per se, I sit down for hours and I take different cases of healing from Genesis to Revelation. And I put God in remembrance of all the miracles, all the barren cases that he has done. I praise him for that. I take examples of dead raising from Genesis to the book of Acts. And I put God in remembrance of all the dead raising that he has done in the Bible. I take every leper from Genesis to the book of Acts, and I put God in remembrance of all the cases of leprosy that he has healed, and so on and so forth. That's how I barack, that's how I prepare for healing services, for healing crusade, for today, that's how I prepare. I barack the Lord, I spend my time baracking, and you have many things to barack about in the Bible. Now, if you have not made Jesus Lord over your life, then baracking is not for you. 
because you need first of all to receive him as your king and as your savior so today i want to pray for you so that you can pledge your allegiance to christ jesus to the constitution of his kingdom found in this book from genesis to revelation and you are going to be a citizen of the kingdom of uh, heaven your name is going to be registered in the book of the lamb in heaven so let me pray for you in jesus name open your heart and let jesus enter and give you the peace that surpasses all understanding father i want to give you all the glory i want to give you all the praise for your sons and your daughters under the sound of my voice father it is not your will that any of them should perish for you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten son jesus so that none of them have to go to hell in jesus name none of them has to go to hell and right now for your own great name's sake i command satan to leave them alone in jesus name let the sins be forgiven in jesus name and i pray my king and my savior that your blood is going to wipe out all the handwritings or requirement that that is standing against them and you are going to make them as white as snow open up the floodgates of heaven and pour out of your spirit of adoption so that they also can become sons and daughters of the most high god in jesus precious name amen so if you have uh, prayed this prayer with me and made this quality decision to become a child of god welcome into the family of uh, born again believers and please contact us so that we can help you in your christian journey in jesus precious name amen i want to share a testimony with you during one of uh, hope fans church uh, uh, services uh, early this year earlier this year a lady contacted us and informed us that she has been suffering from a very painful uh, problem around her womb. She had painful cramps for at least 13 years. And during the service, as she sat there, the word of knowledge went forth and God gave a word that corresponded with her specific situation and the holy spirit fell upon her she was instantly healed by the power of the holy spirit so she sent us a message she praised god as he had healed her from that affliction in the name of jesus and while i was praying preparing for this service barracking the lord i saw a woman named the pura p-u-r-a named the pura and she's originally from australia she has been believing god for a miracle so now i'm going to pray for you pura because the lord knows where you are he knows your name hallelujah he has called you by your name pura and i'm going to pray for you in the name of jesus heavenly father i want to pray for pura because she believes that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And she believes that there is no distance in the spirit. Let it be done unto her according to her faith. What she's believing you for has nothing to do with divine healing. But Father, you said in the Bible, in the book of Psalm 37, verse 4, that if we delight in the Lord our God, you are going to grant us the desires of our heart. So I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you grant Pura the desires of her heart right now in jesus name whatsoever she has been believing you for i pray my king and my savior that right now you meet her at the point of need the woman with the issue of blood said within herself that if only i can touch the hem of the garment of jesus i will be made whole i will be cured of that uh, disease so i pray that uh, what she has a uh, purpose in her heart to receive from you, my King and my Savior, I pray that you grant it to Pura in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I want to pray for all of you, our viewers, that uh, love the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 8, verse 11, that the word of God is a seed. I have a bag of seeds here. And uh, the Bible says that God sent forth his word, the seed of his word, to heal them and deliver them from all kinds of destruction. So lay your hands on the part of your body that is afflicted. I want you to believe with me for God to do a miracle. When? today because if the two of us shall agree as touching concerning anything it shall be done by my father who is in heaven so let me pray for you in jesus precious name 
Lay your hands on your body. Heavenly Father, we want to give you all the glory. We want to give you all the praise because you are the same yesterday. You are the same today and forevermore. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will by no means pass away. You are the healer yesterday. You are the healer today. The things which are impossible with mankind and earthly physicians are possible with God because with God, nothing shall be impossible. Father, look at the afflictions of your sons and of your daughters. Daughters. They are calling upon your name, not upon the name of any other man, because there is only one name that has been given in, in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, if it is the name of Jesus. And at the mention of that name, every situation are going to bow. All the situations are going to bow. All the knees are going to bow in the name of Jesus. So I curse right now every sickness, every disease under the sound of my voice, and I command the divine healing right now. I command perfect wholeness and I command perfect soundness right now in Jesus name you have a problem with your right eye the muscles in your right eye are causing you a problem and uh, your eye is not uh, moving uh, the right way and I pray right now in the name of Jesus that the Lord is going to to strengthen the muscles in your eye in the name of Jesus and that the right eye is going to function properly in Jesus uh, precious name. Amen. And you have a problem of a detached retina. Another person has a problem of a detached retina. Right now in the name of Jesus, I command that retina to be reattached in Jesus' precious name for the glory of God. I see another case, someone with a problem of glaucoma. The doctor said that uh, your glaucoma cannot be healed. We thank God for the medical doctors, but let us pray in the name of Jesus because the things which are impossible with medical doctors are possible with Dr. Jesus. Father, we want to thank you. We want to give you all the glory for that uh, glaucoma. You are the same yesterday. You opened all the blind eyes in the Bible. So I command that glaucoma to leave right now in Jesus' name. From the crown of the head of that wonderful person to the tip of the toes i command perfect wholeness and i command perfect soundness father have your way and bring deliverance and divine healing in jesus precious name amen and father i want to pray for everyone else under the sound of my voice whose case uh, have not been mentioned though the cases have not been mentioned but father you know the name so right now in the name of jesus i command divine healing i send forth your word to heal them of all manners of sickness and all manners of disease i dispatch your angels immediately let your angels minister healing to them right now in jesus name and from the crown of the head to the tips of the toes perfect wholeness is decreed and perfect soundness for your glory thank you because you love them thank you because christ did not die in vain you heal them of all afflictions in jesus precious name amen well, TBN UK family, we have run out of time once again. Thank you for joining me. I hope that you have enjoyed our study on the praise called Barak. As always, in addition to what you have heard here today, always seek medical advice for your illnesses. Join me next time as we look at Halal. Not uh, the halal meat, but halal the form of a praise. Don't forget uh, to bring your Bible, to take note. Make sure that you tune in, always expectant of a miracle. I will see you soon. I love you, and my God loves you unconditionally. God bless you, in Jesus' name. Amen.